are listening to HVAC Masters of the Hustle podcast, and here's your host, J-Dub Moneymaker, and welcome to episode 201. Wow. First off, I got to say thank you for all the Spartans that reach out every week and truly tells me how this podcast is bringing you and your company to the next level. Man, happy 2023 HVAC Masters of the Hustle has some massive goals this year, which we're going to absolutely just crush. We're going to smash. And, uh, you know, we could only do that with your guys' help out there, the Spartans. So make sure you guys share the podcast, share the episode, and let people know across the industry how this podcast is bringing you to the next level. And as you guys all know, and girls, we got a huge event just two weeks away in Northern California. We have some of the top speakers that are going to be on stage ready to bring and drop nuggets again to bring you and your company to the top level to start your 2023 off with the bang. And I had the privilege and honor to have one of the guest speakers drop some bombs before the event. He's a guest on the podcast today. Let's give Mr. Brandon Rackler a big old hand. What is up, Brandon? Hey, J-Dub. How's it going, man? It's going good, man. So, uh, you know, I've done some training with you throughout the years and everything like that. And I said, you know, who would be a better, who, who wouldn't be any better than my good friend Brandon right out there in San Antonio, Texas? I mean, what you've done in this industry, you created a great name for yourself. Everybody knows you across the nation. So welcome to the hot seat, brother. But you know, I want to start, maybe some of my listeners don't know who you are. So tell my listeners a little bit about your journey of how you got into this crazy industry that we call HVAC. Yeah, cool, man. So, uh, you know, just like uh, many of the of the guys and, and, and people that, you know, are listening to uh, to your podcast and, and, uh, and in this industry, you know, I started out, uh, you know, doing, doing, uh, uh, tech work. Actually, I started out as an install helper. And so I started in, in 1995, okay, at the age of uh, 15 years old. And I started at my dad's AC company at that time, uh, doing uh, coming up there in the summer and being an install helper. And I did that for, for a couple of summers. And um, I kind of figured out, you know, pretty quick that I, I liked the air conditioning work and um, I wasn't really much of a school guy. I didn't like school. <laughs> okay. And so I was kind of the, uh, you know, I would I'd do like the, the bare minimum, you know, just to get, get by and pass and school like that. Cause it wasn't very interesting to me. And this, this mm -hmm. air conditioning stuff was interesting to me. And so, you know, I'm the kind of person who, you know, if something is interesting to me. I can, I can put a lot into it and, you know, and do it. And uh, so I actually begged my parents for a while to let me just quit school, get the GED and start working full time in the air conditioning. And, and I finally convinced them to, to let me do that. And so that's what I did. Um, you know, I, I knew I wasn't, you know, going to be going to college and this is what I wanted to do. And I just wanted to kind of get to it as quickly as possible. And so I, uh, I did that. And then I. Um, after that, I, I started learning uh, more stuff and just kind of kept, uh, you know, uh, progressing. And then I went into uh, an install lead position and I was doing doing my own installs, got to, you know, got to a point I was making making a little bit of money and stuff like that. And um, and I uh, kept doing that. And so in the summer of 1999, uh, I got married to my high school sweetheart, my uh, uh my wife uh, now, her name is Mariah, and I actually met her in kindergarten in, in our little our little hometown, right? And so I've known her my whole life. And and uh, again, kind of one of those scenarios, like like why wait? Like we know we love each other. We're gonna, you know. So I get married early at the age of nineteen. I'm doing uh, AC installs, and uh, after we got back from uh, you know from our honeymoon and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I, was, I started working at, at my, my dad's AC company and he told me, hey, uh, I sold my company. And I was a little bit taken back at that. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't really expecting that. I didn't really even consider, you know, 
selling a, a company at that time, right? Yeah. And so, so 19, you know, started my life, started my marriage, you know, started in the industry. And then that, that was a little bit of a, you know, of a, of a bomb that was, that was dropped on me. And, and, and I think he realized that my reaction was, was a little, you know, maybe not what he expected either. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, and so that, so his company did get sold, man. And it was, uh, it was to the service experts group, like back then in the, in the late nineties, you know, that was a big consolidation effort going on back then. Um, somewhat similar to what we're seeing now, but, but, you know, in a different way. And, uh, and so I kept, kept, I stayed on there, man. I stayed on there for a little bit longer and, uh, nothing really changed really for the first, you know, five, six months. And then when that group got sold off to another group, it started changing a little bit. And then we started seeing like some, you know, some key people kind of leaving and doing, you know, doing different things. So, so what I decided to do was uh, me and a good buddy of mine went out and bought vans and we, we were, we were pretty good installers at that time. And so what we did is we bought vans and we went around and, um, we went and talked to all of the different AC contractors in town and knocked on their door. You know, we, we, we made a, uh, you know, we kind of dressed up nice We put on like these denim shirts and all this stuff and went in there clean and nice and made little, little price books for like our services, yeah. you know, complete change outs this much, you know, all this kind of stuff. Here's what we do. Here's how we do it. Here's our pictures. And so we basically kind of went out and sold ourselves as subcontractors. And so we were, um you know we left working over there and we're we're self-employed for uh for the first time kind of kind of doing our own thing and uh and that went pretty well you know it it's a it's a pretty big benefit if you think about it to um to a company if you have a good uh installer sub that you can call whether you're a small guy who doesn't want to have a full-time installer on board all year and you can just use them whenever you need Mm -hmm. or even if you're a little bit even if you have your own crews you know, it all comes down to capacity. So uh, whenever your crews are full and you could call these guys and they're basically always going to say yes. And, you know, you can just stack on jobs. I mean, we would take on, it's a, I mean, we would never say no. We would just do as much work <laughs> as we could. Do we, do we ever say no? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so that, that was pretty good. Um, and uh, so we did that for a couple of years. And then um, after that, oops, did I, you still there? You're good. You still hear me? Yep. Okay. So, so we did that for a couple of years and then, um, and then we started, uh, John Wayne in 2001 and, uh, in the fall of 2001. And at that, so it was me and, uh, Jake, the guy I was doing the subcontracting with and, uh, and my mom and dad. And we started it with a, with a full page phone book ad. Uh, cause back, you know, 2001, that's what you did. You, you, you advertise in the phone oh, book. Yeah. So that's kind of before the, you know, the Google and stuff like that. And so we, we came in, um, we, we did a $29 service call, uh, because we just, we had no customer base. We had to, we knew we had to get, get in the, in the door and get in the houses and, you know, meet customers. And so we had a cheap service call, uh, just to, just to make calls. Um, and then we did another thing. Um, so back then the, 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 the first, uh, you know, grouping of ads is called was called air conditioning contractors, and it went by size and seniority. You know, and so back then, you remember those phone books were like this big, right? Oh, absolutely. And so the air conditioning section, you know, if you're new, you're going to be even if you buy a full page, you'll be way behind the thirty guys that have been running full pages for years. So, um, so we tried something and it worked. There's a section called air balancing. It's right before air conditioning contractors. And so we bought our ad in air balancing. We put in our $29 service call and we also threw an air balancing into the ad. And so it lands like right in front of air conditioning contractors. So it kind of did a strategic a, right a, there. Look at that. A, a, a little bit of a heading jump there. And that was, uh, it was kind of funny. We made a little bit of a splash. It wasn't very popular with some of the local guys. <laughs> um, it's a funny thing is that that section actually got everybody started doing that all over. So they, uh, I think it was AT and T that had the phone book at that time. They they end up pulling that that whole uh, that whole section out because uh, it was kind of <laughs> that was going on. But anyway, we started like that, man. And uh, as soon as that phone book came out, the calls came, and we started running the calls and uh, and just kind of 
just kind of took it from there, you know, right there is, you know, just, just us guys running, running calls. And, you know, we would, um, uh, sell, sell jobs and do our own installs and, you know, do it, everything like that. And, um, that was kind of how it began. And then obviously things, you know, kind of grew and progressed over the next several years, but that was, that was the beginning times. That's, that's how it was. It was a lot of, a lot of hard work and, you know, late nights and all that kind of stuff. Like I'm sure a bunch of people can relate to. So very, very similar to probably how a lot of people, you know, get into the business. Absolutely. You know, I love your journey. I love your venture. I mean, you have such a great name in the industry and what you guys have grown in San Antonio, but I know that you're not, you're not done there, right? I mean, you just started new ventures in 2023 of things that you want to execute and, you know, goals and visions. So let's talk about those, you know, 2023, what, what's Brandon going to do? Yeah. Okay. So I think the so, world's ready for this. <laughs> yeah, man. So, uh, so we're really excited about this too. And uh, 2023, very much looking forward to, you know, we want to get out there and, and accomplish and, um, you know, still got a, a lot of gas in the tank and, you know, uh, want to do a lot of things. And, and first of all, um, I love our industry. I really do. Um, it's just, uh, it, it's really cool, you know, to see people, not just like myself, but you look at some of the other uh, people in the industry and some of the well-known names and, a lot of people come from these like humble beginnings and able to really make something out of themselves in this industry. So, uh, it's amazing. And, uh, I love, I love our industry. I love the trades and, um, we're, we're launching a new company, uh, here next month and we're going to be, uh, in the, in the home service space. And we're actually going to be a, a multi-trade business, you know, from, from day one, uh, HVAC plumbing and electrical. And, um, uh, obviously, my background is in HVAC, but you know I've had a lot of experience with uh, plumbers and electricians over the last ten years as well. And um, there, there is a lot of things that really do go hand in hand um, with within the uh, within the business. So uh, we're starting that here in uh, this next month. The name of our company is called the Problem Solvers. All right, and and um, what we're looking to do as far as our goals are is I've, I've actually put together a, a, a very good group of guys that I'm very happy to, to kind of launch with a great team. And, uh, and not that most people, well, most people don't, I mean, most people start off either on their own or, you know, with, mm -hmm. with, you know, one partner or whatever. Um, so, you know, because of the time in the industry and, you know, getting, you know, relationships and connections and things like that, uh, I was able to put together a pretty good solid team for us to start with. And that's one of my Love most it. exciting things is how often do you do a startup and you have a great team and not only a great team that like you just went out and, and hired a bunch of guns, like people that, you know, people that you trust, people that you don't have to retrain, you know, yeah. uh, yeah, it's huge. so yeah, absolutely huge. So, so on the, on the air conditioning side, we basically have, you know, made a little, uh, acquisition, you know, tuck into this new, this new company with, uh, with a guy that I've known for, man, almost 13, 14 years. Um, and has been in the air conditioning space for a long time. Actually, he, he came in, uh, back in the day with, with our company through a academy program. We'd, we'd bring guys in from outside of the industry and, and teach them up. Uh, he went through that. Uh, he became a, uh, uh, an installer, uh, you know, was a, was a field supervisor, did, did a bunch of different things for us over the years. Then he branched out and, um, went out and started his own uh, business, been doing that for about six years. And, uh, and we reconnected and I kind of told him what, what I was doing. And he was very interested in, in, uh, kind of coming along for that. Uh, been out there on his own and it's, you know, it's tough out there and it's, it's, uh, uh, nothing wrong with it. There's a lot of freedom. There's a lot of great things about, you know, being that, that lone wolf, if you will. Um, but, you know, kind of understands the vision and idea of, of kind of, you know, what, what a solid team can be. And so mm -hmm. we're bringing that into it. Um, another one is a, a guy who uh, is an electrician, master electrician, similar story, known him before, worked with him before in the past. Um, you know, he's been doing, uh, you know, his business and he's done very well, um, you know, for, for a little over a year. 
and a uh, similar story, you know, is kind of ready to, to kind of put this thing together with us and, you know, do some great things. Um, and then I have another guy who, uh, again, um, worked with before, known, you know, been, and actually he, he was a CA for us uh, years ago. He was our number one CA, as nice. a matter of fact. You know, and he's a killer and he's, he's a good dude. Uh, and this guy's been doing some different things the last couple of years and really got into some general contracting, some bathroom remodels. And what's cool is everyone has experienced a lot of things outside of us being together and, yeah. uh, and as I have myself. So, so that's, uh, that's kind of the core of, of the team that uh, we put together. Um, and then um, I have a, a good friend of mine, another person that we uh, have worked with in the past um who was was no longer over at the old company and so the timing was just kind of right i reached out to him and you know he was looking for something uh something new is you know needing needing a, a home and uh, uh been with this guy for many years he's ran my call center dispatch uh you know very good in operations and we're, we're super thrilled to have him a part of the team um so so that's that's basically what we're doing man is putting that together uh, we're the problem solvers and, you know, our goal is to obviously solve problems for customers, right? That's, that's what mm -hmm. we do, right? Yep. Um, you know, one of, uh, one of the mentors that me and you share is Weldon Long, right? And yes. he always talks about like, the more problems you solve, the more money you make, right? Something yep. like that. I don't yep. know exactly how he says it, but, um, and there's truth in that, right? And so, you know, that's that's kind of what we're looking to do is is to go out and be able to solve problems, but not only solve problems like in the space of HVC. If it's our AC guy, there's other things that we can do, and there's a lot of synergy you can have uh, being able to solve multiple problems for a homeowner. And you know, you could probably think of times, uh, even Jason, like when you were running calls, or when you're even now when you're doing these ride-alongs, there's always a little something extra that someone's oh, yeah. looking for, right? <clears throat> um, I remember a funny one. Uh, speaking of that, when you guys you did a ride along with one of our guys, or actually we had two guys with you that day, mm -hmm. and um, this lady mentioned at some point about like rearranging her furniture in the living oh, room. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. And uh, and so you're <clears> like, <throat> okay, well, let's let's do this for you. Yeah, and let's completely rearrange you, so it. I think you guys spent like 30, 40 minutes or whatever did yeah. the did the whole uh, rearranging of the furniture for her and uh and so that was a that was like an extra problem solved you know of the day not to mention you know selling the hvac or whatever the thing was yeah. at that time it's a, it's about going over and beyond right it, it's just one of those things i always ask is you know in the appointment when i'm riding along as a tune-up or a comfort advisor like hey is there anything additional that you guys want us to do here you got two strong men we could change light bulbs take out the trash for you what is it that you need from us extra everyone needs something done right and it's just that little bit of that extra question that you ask at the end or in the middle of the appointment that goes so much further right and i love that you know we'll we'll talk about you know the new company with problem solvers but i love that you're focusing on just not the hvac space right you're looking at hvac plumbing and electrical because now as a problem solver right there's the full envelope of the scope of the work that we could look at now you know, there's too many times where I do come into companies and I do ride alongs, Brandon, and I go, hey, man, I look at the full envelope and I'm like, man, they need insulation. They need this. They need this. And the I call the owner and I'm like, hey, can we offer this? And they go, no, we don't even offer it. I'm like, oh, man, you guys just like this is five thousand dollars of things that they're wanting to do that you're willing to walk away from. Right. Yeah. So talk about yeah, the importance of looking at the full envelope that you were talking about oh man i think you know if you look at um you know any kind of of training you go through you teach this you know uh different people you know teach this there's there's an investigation or an observation uh, observation phase of you know uh, uh of doing this and so when it comes to you know doing service and and sales in the house um you know we can really we need to have a problem to solve we need to have you know a, what's what's the real reason while we're out there first of all so there's you know there's the idea of you know kind of peeling that onion or sometimes it's not so clear up front you know mm -hmm. we're out there for a tune-up but this person already knows they need a new system sometimes yep. you know and so you got to kind of you know dig in there a little bit 
But I think also to your point, there is a lot of times there's other stuff and you come across other things either with your, you know, visual, you know, uh, looking through and, and doing, doing the, you know, you come across different things. You might see something that looks wrong or something they might need help with, or something might come up just in conversation. Like, like, uh, when you were with the guys and, you know, did the furniture thing, that kind of, you wouldn't have known she needs the furniture rearranged. She told Mm -hmm. you all that. And so you got to be listening. Right. And, um, uh, you know, kind of taking those blinders off and being and listening. And then once you find out what that thing is, um, then to your point, it's nice to be able to solve that problem in house Mm -hmm. if you can, if you can solve that problem for them. And so, you know, one thing that, some of those owners might think about even if they are not ready to take on multiple trades and services or something like that is partner up with somebody to do that you know like when we started back in the day you know the reason we got into plumbing is because guys were coming across opportunities all the time customers are asking for it and you know i'm like I'm subbing this guy three and four <laughs> times a week for water heaters because we got pretty good at that part. It's like, okay, let's just do that. Let's just yeah. get that that part in here now. And so what they'll find is if if they can partner with, you know, uh, like a, a local contractor and, you know, uh, somebody else that can do those things for them, they could still start offering those different services and just basically selling it out of their HVAC company, for example, and sub that part of it out. and later on that might turn into something bigger you know they might find that you know that's that's kind of organically how they would get into the other to their trades possibly mm-hmm. that's, that's how we did it yeah no 100 percent. that's good right there um one thing that i want to kind of turn the the conversation to is um i get to travel a lot right company after company after company And there's only a couple companies that really stand out to me when it comes to having their culture buy in. Okay. Um, You know, that seems like something that you're really good at is getting your guys to buy into whatever's going on, right? Culture wise, talk about maybe some of my business owners or managers are having trouble with that right now, Brandon, of having their team buy in. You know, one thing that when I did trainings, when I talk about buying culture wise, you know, pledge of the legion, saying a prayer, things like that, where the, the whole team's willing to do it instead of, you know, one guy not wanting to participate or this and that. Talk about how did you structure something like that? Yeah. So, you know, that was, um, you know, that what so kind of what you saw there was, you know, that was the kind of years in the making to, you know, to get, to get to that. Um, that wasn't the way it necessarily was from day one. That was, you know, something that that we found very important, especially in the growth. Once you start experiencing the growth, um, you get, you know, these these growing pains we call them, mm-hmm. and um, and you'll get some people uh, in your business that, you know, maybe you get a guy that can put up some numbers, that can do something for you, but he's not that cultural fit, right? Mm-hmm. He's not that guy that you really. Um, you know, that, that the rest of the team really gets behind, you know, that, that feels like, you know, they can trust him and they, you know, they're, they're the, you know, similar to, to this person. So, you know, having those common bonds and being able to, you know, so as a, as a business leader, business owner, you know, your job is to sort of cast that vision for what, what it is that, you know, you're about and what is, what is that kind of higher purpose? What is that, you know, what, what is the purpose of what we're doing here beyond, you know, the, the nuts and bolts of air conditioning, right? Absolutely. And, um, and so that's hugely important. That's something that actually um, the guys love that. They want that, right? Everybody wants to be a part of something bigger. Everybody wants to be a part of, you want to be on the winning team. You want to be on, you know, the team of uh, people that are doing things the right way, that are investing in you, you know, you know, personally and, and professionally and, you know, and, and getting you trained and everything like that. So, yeah, I would say that's, that's a huge part of, of that. You know, I think another, another cool part of it is uh, in an area that I'm going to really try to do even better in this time is, you know, getting into the personal goals of the people. Right. And, Mm -hmm. and, as intimately as they will let you, like you can't, you know, force people to tell you, you know, 
everything, but yeah. uh, the better relationship you have and the more that you know about what their personal goals are, the better you can help them uh, reach those goals, right? Um, one of the cool things I really like that you do is the the vision, as you call it, the vision board, the goal board, right? There it is. Look at it. Oh, yeah. I am. Just had my team all finish theirs. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, we're going to, we're going to do that too. That's, that was a, that was a great exercise. And, and mm -hmm. really, uh, I think that was, man, that might've been one of the first times you came out. I think you did that, right? Yeah. Is that, yep, yeah. Yep. It's usually so, first day. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm sitting kind of the back of the room. I'm just kind of checking things out, you know, seeing, okay, what's, what's this guy gonna, gonna, you know, do today. And it was cool, man. Like, I mean, I'm sitting there like literally I'm like, dude, I'm learning. This guy is helping me learn things about my team that I didn't mm -hmm. even know some of these things, you know, and they were very willing to, you know, to go along with that. And uh, that was awesome. Yeah. And so, you know, those personal goals are huge, too. It's crazy when I do when I have companies break down their personal goals like that, right? Business and personal. And I have them break it down one year, three years and five years. It's crazy the response I get from a lot of business owners. I was just in Indiana this week and I had them break down their goals. And, you know, the, the owners of the company were just really shocked because now it gives them leverage as a leader to be able to help them cross those goals off. Right. If we don't know what people want to achieve and it might not be money, not everyone's money motivated. Right. right? There's different goals. Maybe they want extra time off vacations. But it's crazy because half the time I'll ask, you know, a lot of people say, I want to go on a family vacation. I haven't been on a vacation in eight years or me and my wife haven't done just a vacation with us for five years. Right. It's like, man, well, we got to really get them on vacation. Right. We got to maybe rekindle that spark in their relationship. Maybe there might be some deeper meanings behind of the visions and their goals of what they want to obtain. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know it's, it's, it's good for them, uh, also to be kind of held accountable to that too, Absolutely. because if they're, if they're taking actions that aren't, you know, getting them towards that goal and and as a leader, we know that, you know, um, you know, we can, we can, we can come in and, and, and maybe remind them of that. And, uh, so I think it's a great thing. I think it, I think it puts your, it's always good when there's more accountability both ways. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, and uh, when you have that accountability, when you have that kind of relationship where you can have those conversations, you know, really great things can be done. So, yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. Yeah, 100 percent on that. You know, one thing that we were talking about is, you know, with your company problem solvers, I wanted to talk to you about what's your vision there? What's your mission? OK, so, you know, basically it's it's helping customers, you know, sol solve, uh, you know, their problems. Right. But also, uh, you know, so it's helping customers solve problems while vastly exceeding their expectations by developing exceptional employees. That's like what we have written, right? Wow. Um, so, you know, one of our goals is to uh, help develop our people. And so, you know, kind of back to this whole subject we're talking about, the more we develop our people, the better problem solvers, solvers they're going to be in the home and in their own personal lives, right? Yeah. Because a lot of, uh, you know, our areas of, of concern or areas that uh, we need to work on, you know, those are actually problems that need to be solved, right? So, um, you know, the first step in, in solving something is understanding what it is or understand mm -hmm. that, it, that it even exists, you know? Um, just like, you know, we talk about, you know, having the blinders on running that call, you can have blinders on running through your life and, and not, not seeing, you know, what's going on around you in some way. So personal yeah. growth is, is going to be a big part of our mission, you know, for me personally, for, um, you know, for the guys that, uh, you know, are coming on board here and for the guys that we're looking to employ, um, you know, we want to help them with their personal growth, uh, both, you know, professionally and, and personally, and obviously financially mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely. Um, what is your goal? <clears throat> what is your goal for problem solvers for 2023 as of revenue and everything like that? Have you broken those numbers down? We do. And you know, it's, it, it, it might be, it, it's lofty brother. It is. Okay. <laughs> and it's just, <Thank> big. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's my that's my downside sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's <laughs> too crazy with stuff. But so so as as our first year, our our target, like our high end target number is seven point five million. And and basically the way we have that broken down is there's about a third, 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 you know, about a two and a half uh, per trade. Yep. And, and and the way that we look at it is, you know, a lot of times somebody can come into a marketplace and they can do two or three million in their first year. Right. Uh, as an AC company or whatever. And so we feel like, well, we can do that times three because we're actually coming in with with all three. And um, and so that that's our goal. That's our that's our goal. For I our love first year. it. And I, I know 100 percent that you're going to hit that target because of your mindset, the team that you brought on. I mean, you are hungry and I know that you want to prove something and you want to prove it quick and you want to make an impact in your market and show everyone that you're you're there to stay. You're yeah. there to, to make an impact and you're there to stay, baby. Awesome. Uh, one thing, one thing that I want to talk about is in two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to be flying down to California. You're going to be on stage in front of a hundred plus contractors at the HVAC masters of the hustle, big bang event. I'm super excited to get you on stage. Kind of give a little, uh, a little, uh, I guess, uh, what are the, what's the, a little sample of what you're going to be dropping on stage to help people get to the next level? Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're going to focus on uh, basically winning out there in the marketplace when there's a financial downturn, which, you know, uh, which that's, that's what we're told we're, we're in and what we're going to be experiencing. Right. So, um, you know, it's from, from my, uh, you know, experience, um, you know, basically, you know, launching a, a company, you know, like literally at 9-11 and then going mm -hmm. through, you know, like the, uh, the, the housing crisis, you know, 08 and, and some different things. I'm just going to talk about some different things that people can basically be looking to do uh, during those econ you know, harder economic times. And, you know, one of the big ones um, is basically having is understanding that you know everything is a season right so if if we're in this season that that doesn't mean you know this is the way things are forever but that's the season that we're in so kind of understanding what does that mean what do, what how does that change the marketplace how does that change like some consumer behavior how does that change some of our uh, employees you know thoughts and behaviors and what what can we do about that and so I'll basically be just talking about that and then some different ideas and some different strategies that people can do to kind of stay focused on the things that are within their control and not be focused on all the outside noise so much. I mean, we have to be aware of what's going on, but we can't let that outside noise basically take over, you know, all the decisions that we're making. So a big part of that first uh First part of that is going to be a mindset, you know, and then we'll get love into it. some other uh, strategies and things. Oh, I love it. You know, uh, I got a lot of people across the nation that's coming <clears throat> and a lot of local contractors and I'm super excited. You know, this is one of our biggest events that we've probably thrown uh, since, since throwing events. And it's just crazy because each one just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it, I love throwing the events because, you know, so many people hear me on podcasting and social media, but what being on stage does, it really shows and gets them to understand the passion that everyone has behind it. You know, I think that we put on a really good speaking platform with some of the top names in the industry that's going to be delivering a lot of great value across the board, you know, and I'm super excited to have you a part of the event you know, Brandon, I got listeners from business owners, CSRs, dispatchers, service managers, <clears throat> supervisors, sales installers. What would you like for them to get out of this episode of HVAC Masters of the Hustle? Oh, good, good question. Um, you know, I think I think what I'd like them to get out of uh, of this episode would be is just just to keep your keep your passion, keep grinding. You know. Um, and, and ultimately you got to You got to listen to, to the right voices and make, make the decisions that you need to make for you, your family and your future. Um, sometimes that's not going to be the easiest choice or the easiest decision. Um, but if you do that and you, you, you listen, you know, to, to that and, and you follow through with it, 
I promise you that it will be well worth it for you. And I think you'll you'll find out that you have a ton of uh, support within your your true inner circle that will support you and help you with that. Nice. Sky's the limits for you, brother. I'm excited to truly see what this venture brings you. Until next time, brother. See you soon. Thank you, man. Boom. Nice.